and just gone anywhere, jails after jails. I was in Long Bay Prison two weeks ago, you know, preaching in the jail, Long Bay Prison there. These are places where you don't get paid. Most places I go to, I don't get paid. There is no offerings, nothing. A God makes a way. And I'm sharing this because, you know, not to get you to feel sorry for me, but because it's a side of life and the ministry that we probably don't hear a lot about. And I've it says, I'd love to share these things of churches. I'd love to. Because God is opening up these sorts of doors. And not as an attitude or a get back, just plain well reality, you see. Because God wants to reach people. And we need more evangelists. We need more evangelists. More evangelists. We really do. There's hardly any ones around. And I believe that. I believe that for every Pentecostal church, there should be a flaming evangelist raised up, equipped, financed, and sent out. Serious. Absolutely serious. He gave apostles, pastors, prophets, teachers, and evangelists. My heart's for the evangelist. We need more evangelists. I believe that there are evangelists around that are in churches, that, are, that have been discouraged maybe, haven't understood what's involved. It's teaching about everything else by the evangelist. I mean, I know because I go to all the seminars. And I love seminars. I love going to church, man. I go them all the time. I love them. But my heart cry is for the evangelist. And I believe that, that God wants that birth back into this nation. Oh, I believe that. I believe that. But there's so little understood about the evangelist. It's a different ministry from the pastor. I'm not a pastor. I would make a pastor's bootlace. You wouldn't want me as a pastor. You would hate me. <laughs> and it's true, because I tried it twice. <laughs> it doesn't work. A round peg in a square hole. Serious. It's not me. But God loves a try. I'll have a go. If I muck up and mess up, well, big deal, I just get back on track again. You know, it's an experience. So in a couple of, couple of minutes, I'm going to have an altar call. And uh, I want to pray tonight for people here that you believe that God has called you to be an evangelist. How will you know? You will know. And you say, well, if I'm called to be an evangelist, what should I do? You should start to study the evangelist. You should start to, to, to look for opportunities for your gift to flow. You say, well, I couldn't get invited to a church. Well, maybe not. But you can get invited to the street. And then I tell you what, I've preached on street corners many, and, and I've had pastors come up to me in the street and says, hey, would you come to my church and minister? I've had a lot of ministry from, from living that way. You know, he'll make a way. But tonight... If you believe God has called you to be an evangelist, I want you to ask you to come forward in a couple of minutes. And I'd like you to come over here. And I want to, to lay hands on you. You say, will that make me an evangelist? No. But it's a start. Yeah. It's a start. You will know. You will know. There's a difference between a burden and a calling. You will know. We're not all called to be evangelists. We're all called to do the work of an evangelist. I mean, I pastor... I don't pastor a church, but I pastor people who have my background. And I go around and visit them and talk to them. And they listen because identification. And I pastor them, then, then put them into churches. You know? so, so, so I do that. I can teach. Some people don't think I can, but I can. You know, I can teach. Not, not silly. I do read. <laughs> Hang around the cram. But it, yeah. <laughs> Bookshop. The Lord is wonderful and He loves you all so much. He does. And again, I, I count it such a privilege of being here tonight, Phil. And, uh, you know, I just do. And it's just such a blessing. And, uh, and just allowing us an opportunity, um, it means a lot to me. You know, I mean, you would have a lot of people through here. And, uh, and I suppose for a lot of ministers think, well, I've been there. But for me, it's very important. Very important. Because it's strategic, you know. Because I've preached in a lot of places, very, very small places. 
you know, and says, oh, Lord, you know, I'd love to be able to minister in a, in, in, in a big church, you know. It encourages me. I don't feel so useless. <laughs> I don't feel like a, you know, backwards such and such, you know. So it encourages me, you see. It's all part of it. It's all part of it. It's exciting. And when I got that motor home, we lived in it and we still live in it. In a little motor home, you know. It's great. I go where I want to go and park out there and minister there, you see. It's exciting. Praise God. Yeah. And so if you feel God's called you to be an evangelist, I'm going to pray for you over here. You, you say, what are you done here? I felt to do this. And this is not manipulation. I'm not a, into manipulation. But there's 48 videos there. I'm going to invite 48 people to sponsor them and, and buy one of those. At $25 each. You say, oh, $25. You're after money. Well, that's how I live. <laughs> yeah, but please, I do what I do because God called me to do it. That's all, as simple as that. Uh, it, it, it's a calling. It's a calling. It's a calling to the Lord. You know, it just is. I don't have no one else back me whatsoever. It's purely on offerings. Okay, I, didn't get, I, I belong to Liverpool Christian Life Centre. They don't give me a check each week. Yeah? It's purely on the love gifts of people. That's how we live. You know? And so there's 48 videos there. And each one of those videos there, it's, the, it's got the gospel, it's got my testimony on it. Nice picture. <laughs> but one of those, one of those could change someone's life. And I, I put them around like that because there's 48 people out there tonight where you could afford one of those. And you could take one of those and say, yeah, I'm going to take it to, to, to another Kevin Mudford out there. You might have to go to the cross to do it. You might have to go to the hotel to do it. There's somebody in your community that would sit down and watch that one-hour testimony. And your $25 seed, that goes towards registering my car. <laughs> it goes towards putting petrol in my car. It goes towards, you know, an aeroplane ticket to get somewhere. You see? You know, I've got a mother that's, that, that's got about eight days to live, you know. So I went and sold my Harley the other day, you see. And I'm glad I sold the thing, because it's not a God to me. And I sold it, you know, for half the price of what it was worth. I said, take it. I don't need it. You know, motorbikes don't save anybody. It's Jesus, you see. But I'm willing to do that. We've gone to cash converters and taken stuff and sold it. I've been there. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you, when I came here that New Year's Eve, I was that broke. I had nothing. And there was a lady in the foyer there. And the Spirit of God said to me, I want you to go up and talk to her. And I went out there and I was praising God and I didn't really feel like counselling people. And I just had to go over and just talk to her. She knew us and I just started to share with her. And I went back into the meeting and I was praising God and it was a great time. She came up to me and she gave me $100. 100 bucks. And I thought, boy, that woman doesn't know how much that 100 bucks means to us because we had nothing, you see. You know? That happened here on New Year's Eve, you know. And, 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 uh, and it kind of means a lot. Because, because God cares. He cares. He does. He really does. You know? And so I'm just going to leave those there and, uh, and I'm going to let the Spirit of God speak to your heart. Which one wants to take one? Praise God. Take one there. Which ask the musicians to come up and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> get up an altar call and... Uh, Those people that, that, that God speaks to wants to get one of these, you might want to come up and get one and just come on your knees and just, just hold on to it. And we'll pray. We'll pray. You might want to come and just grab it and say, yeah. And, uh, and I'll lay hands on you, praise God. That where that video goes to, it's going to touch someone for Jesus. The gospel is free, but not those who've got to preach it. It takes money to do the job. It just does. Praise God. It just does. Hallelujah. I'm just going to ask every head to be bowed and eye to be closed tonight. I'm not going to get into any big, long, elaborate prayer tonight. I don't need to. You just come over here. Just, if you just come over there, and my wife will collect 
that they're offering money just, just afterwards.